everybody, welcome back. As you saw in the little intro video I put together there, today's video is going to be showcasing builds from the latest snapshot for the 1.16 update, the Nether. And uh, this is where I ended the video. I found a nice little spot in between a Soul Sand Valley and a Warped Forest biome, uh, which are the two of the new biomes that are going to be added. And I, I couldn't help myself. I wanted to check out this uh, ancient debris here too. <laughs> this is going to be an amazing thing to add to the game. But for now, let's get into the video. All right, everybody, we got a lot to get through today. We got some room designs, some detailing, some accent pieces, some feature pieces, uh, some furniture, and just a whole bunch of fun stuff. So let's get right into it so we can have some fun. <laughs> now, the first design I thought of when I thought of the new Nether update is this giant, eerie, creepy forge. And we can actually make eerie, creepy things a lot better now with the new blocks. You see, it has, it's purple, but it's got that kind of like off, desaturated look to it. So we can make pretty nice things. And the blue flames really add well to the build. This is the forge. The main thing here is the color palette. So you see we use the different uh, warped blocks, or excuse me, the crimson blocks. And uh, what really makes it, I think, is the new crimson stem. I don't know if that's showing up on the video, but the, the glowing texture to it is amazing. So we combined that, and the crimson goes really well with nether bricks. So we give it this archway, and the one thing you want to do is kind of layer it. So we have a layer here, layer here, and then the forge. I also use these trap doors as kind of like a, a guard for the forge. So you can see through it, but it kind of acts like a screen kind of thing. Another neat thing, and you can use these for uh, different kinds of builds, is using trapdoors and having fire set one block below it. That kind of makes a nice, um, if not a fireplace, maybe like the bellows of a, of a, you know, an old ancient dwarven forge, which is really nice. Okay, the next part that I want to show you is a little bit different. This was using the red theme. This is going to use the blue theme. And what I was kind of going for here is like an open air kind of... Um, Kind of like a haunted mansion sort of thing, like a, a ghostly, ghostly room. And um, one of the things I really like about the blue theme, prismarine goes really well with it. So you can use the prismarine blocks, and this is actually a prismarine wall. Uh, that's actually something new. The wall texture now, and the wall block, is actually completely solid. Now you could very well just as easily use the block instead of the wall, but if you want to have this thin ledge on a window, you're going to want to use the wall. That's pretty nice. Okay, the other thing I want to show you here, there's two more things. Uh, we have a nice little overhang here. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is the use of the warped doors. So the warped doors act as a nice, kind of like a nice little border. I don't want to say wallpaper, but it gives a nice texture and it breaks up the build. And the second thing I want to show you that I came up with here is the floor design. So we have the stripped warp, st stripped warp stem, and we also have the cyan concrete, which also goes well with the new warped blocks. It goes really well, and of course the lanterns as well, because they're blue. And then the other thing I did here, as a nice kind of like a runner, a table runner or floor runner, like a carpet, I used uh, uh, shulker boxes. So what I did is I just took the shulker boxes, placed them like that, and it gives it a nice runner, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Okay, moving on from the ghostly mansion here. I do have something else for a ghostly mansion in a little bit, but I kind of want to move on to uh, more natural builds, because uh, one of the first things I thought of, and one of the first things that came to mind when I saw these new nether blocks, immediately, immediately thought of the movie Avatar. All that beautiful, natural, wonderful jungle, wild nature scenery kind of thing. And so we're going to kind of get into that a little bit now, uh, but this is more of a detail for that. And then I actually have a jungle scene down there that I'll show you in a bit. But one of the things I'm really excited about uh, for this update is we have the crimson fence now and nether brick fence. And as you guys know, with nether brick, it doesn't link with any other wood block. And the same is true for the crimson fence. They do not link, they don't touch, and it can make a really nice border. I mean, really, really nice. Even if you just get, say, you know, the crimson trapdoor and just run it across, 
Even if you don't want to get fancy, just take a trap door, run it across. It makes a pretty nice balcony. You might want to break it up a little bit with some uh, accents in the center and stuff like that. But yeah, um, I came up with something a little bit different. And I'll show you here. Get rid of all this. I came up with a little bit of a unique fence design. Um, as I said, I thought of the movie Avatar, so my mind instantly went to like a fantasy feel. So I came up with this. Um, it's really just more of like a border, like a barrier. So, you know, you're walking along, pretend there's a path here, you're walking along, and it has the light burgundy, I guess you could say, like the purple, and then the nether brick. I use some fence gates here, and then we just have like a little lamp post here. And then you can see in the back, we use a little bit of soul soil for dirt, and we detailed with some of the newer blocks. We'll get into that a little bit later down there. But right now, speaking of details, we can talk about different things that you can put into your builds. So you already have a nice nether build and you're looking for things. Of course, you can add the standard chairs. So you have the crimson chair and you have the warp chair. But another place you can really add this is in a woodland mansion. Or if you build a house out of uh, dark oak or spruce, try adding this chair in there. When I see people do mansions, a lot of times they'll put too much wood in there and there won't be enough color. Putting a chair in here fairly close to a wood color, you know, and it's a somewhat neutral color, but it just adds that little pop of extra. So you can add that in there. And uh, the next thing I want to show you, well, you can also have your tables there. You know, you have fence gates, fence posts. You can have your tables and chairs. But the next thing I want to show you is this little haunted mansion library nook, I guess you could say. You could put a custom head down here, put a nice little ghostly lantern, and then put a, you know, a book nook. <laughs> little library nook there and what I did here I used the warped warp block for the grass uh, not the grass the the carpet and it looks pretty nice one of the things I think really makes this ghostly feel is the trap doors like you can see through them and it's like open a little bit so I think that really helps with the ghostly feel now if you don't like you know this if you don't want to do a whole nook you can just use the table design using that same thing um, instead of making it a whole, you know, big circle, just make it into a table. It's the same thing that's over there. I just did uh, stairs and slabs and uh, uh, these things. Trap doors, yes. <laughs> and you can have a nice little table. Now, other details that you can put in is sometimes you might think of like decrepit and eerie, you know, some sort of like an undead ruler. So you can make this throne for maybe an undead king. The one thing that really makes it here is the nether brick, the fence, and the wall, and it makes these like spikes. And then again, the trap doors I think really help give like the little fine details. It looks kind of more eerie and looks like it's kind of like worn and maybe breaking down a bit. And then I use pressure plates for little armrest guards. But one thing I like to do with any throne room that I put into a build, I like to put in a secret entrance. So, you can see there's a door here. The door makes a nice accent, but it's also functional. You go down here, and you can go down into like an emergency bunker, or maybe the basement, a secret entrance way to the basement, or whatever you like. There's actually some really good stuff in that chest down there. <laughs> yeah. And then I put a pressure plate here so you can easily get out, and the door shuts behind you. Just a little neat little throne for maybe an undead king. <laughs> now, as I said down there, one of the first things I thought of was well, a forge, but also Avatar. And I was thinking of Avatar and those huge jungle growths and plants and things. So I made a couple of flowers. This flower right here is just a, um, just a four petal flower, just a simple little thing. And you can actually build this up in the sky and then have like a, a swirling stem coming down. Or you can even put this on the side of a tree. Whatever you like, you can build it sideways. You just won't be able to use the half, half slabs or stairs. But uh, yeah, it, it looks really nice, and it kind of fits that fantasy theme. Now, another flower that they have in uh, the Avatar world is this glowing uh, finger-like flower. It kind of looks like fingers, and it lights up, and it's, it's very long, skinny leaves on the flower, or long, skinny petals. So I kind of recreated that here, and this would work really well in a fantasy build. Even an underwater build, honestly, for coral. See, one of the things with large bills is it's hard to light it up. 
So this would add a very natural way to light it up instead of just, you know, oh, another lantern or, oh, he put a torch here, you know, it's when you can actually make the, the lighting functional, make it like fit into the build, it's really nice. And then some stained glass for maybe some magical particles. All right, now we're going to get into a neat flooring design that I came up with here. And this uses, of course, the nether warp block that we've had, but also the crimson nylium. And when you put these two together, they they do a decent job at meshing together. They accent each other. I use the warp block for the border, and then the center stripe is the nylium, the crimson nylium. I just use a little bit of terracotta for the center feature here. But we have a nice little entryway. Maybe this can be like an exit to a mansion, or maybe this can lead out to a greenhouse. Who knows? You have your little glass there, and then a giant, like, warped, decrepit greenhouse that's overgrowing with vines and man-eating plants, whatever you like. But another thing I really like here is the sea lanterns, a little bit of the warped nylium, and these mushrooms. It adds a little bit of detail, and it's not really too bright. The other flowers are very bright in color. These are bright, but they're more pastel. And I think they're bright because the sea lanterns. Yeah. So yeah. And then we have the depth here, which is important. We have this layer, this layer, and then the back layer. So yeah, that's what I came up with there. All right, moving back on to the nature builds we have here. We'll cover that later. <laughs> that's awesome. I re This was my favorite thing to do today. So anyways, back to the nature scene. I was thinking here we could have like a nice... Um, totem sanctuary or like a prayer sanctuary a little just a little recess something you could find maybe this is a respawn point in an RPG or something like that but yes we have the Nylium and this this is my new favorite block out of the entire update yes the nether sprouts you see if you look at grass it looks fairly flat and even when you get regular grass uh, it's got a decent height to it, but it blends in. So, if you have a fantasy area or you want to kind of mix things up or, you know, a fantasy build, use these nether sprouts. They're very short, but they add a decent amount of detail to the build. You know, you put a couple of them around there, it details the grass. It just raises up the detail just a little bit. You know, they're short. And just a little bit of detail, they make it nice. Combine that with the nylium and the grass, you have a nice little thing here. I, again, I use the soul soil for dirt, like I did over there. And then, if you want to go real fantasy, you can use this carpet. Maybe for like a, a, a you know, a living fungi or maybe a moss or something, like an enchanted moss. It's a little too bright, I think, but I wanted to give it a try. And then the layering. Also, the cornflower goes pretty well with the build as well. Just a tiny pop of bright blue. And of course we talked about the prismarine and the sea lantern. The other thing I'll mention is that with the nylium, netherrack. Now you wouldn't think of putting never netherrack in an overworld or using it in a build at all, but when you put nylium on top in the overworld, it blends in pretty well, especially since they retextured it, and it really just looks like dirt. Especially in a fantasy setting, this Definitely, you know, dirt, grass, it's got that little off color, the pastel color, works nice. So I think I might start using this as dirt and grass for some of my more fantasy builds. All right, moving on here, we have a nice wall design. We have the blue warped stem in the back. We have the crimson stem down here. The blue is set back and it adds a little pop of different color versus the purple and the red that's prominent here. You can make this a outside accessory. Maybe make a wall and put this along the border of the wall, the bottom of the wall. So you have one there, one there, one there, and just copy and paste it around and then have some pillars going up maybe. Okay, now moving on to light sources. This right here I guess is more of a beacon. So we have uh, prismarine walls here, and then we have sea lantern, and then we just have, you know, mixed slab stairs and uh, the lantern is three tall, and then we also use the the doors here for a nice little border around the bottom. If your build's a little bit smaller and this would stick out like a sore thumb, you could also make this. As I mentioned earlier, the nether brick and the crimson go really well together and put a little lantern there. And if you want something a little bigger, you can work with some stairs and slabs and kind of make this like crooked, decrepit, uh, crooked, eerie, 
creepy lantern hanger, I guess. Yeah. Could even put maybe like a, um, a fence post and maybe some of the shroom light down there if you wanted, if blue wasn't your style. Speaking of shroom light, here's a design that I came up with for a street, a streetway for a modern build. This uses the shroom light and the basalt, two of the new blocks. Now one of the things that a lot of people do is they'll use either concrete or terracotta for streets. And that's all well and good. I mean, modern builds are usually smooth, but if you look at a road, a road is fairly textured. You know, look at the road outside your house and you'll notice all the texture and the rocks and the gravel and the bumps and grooves. This really adds texture to the build. And it's it's nice. I like that the basalt is fairly common, decent, depending on the biome. And then the shroom light, not only is it the strip, uh, the yellow dots, stripes, but it also lights up. It lights up your build, which is really nice. Uh, we have a gradient here going up, carpet, half slabs, and then coral blocks. I don't know if this color goes with the basalt, but I wanted to put this in here to show you that you can make a nice, full walkway while still having variants. You see, that's the uh, brain coral, bubble coral, horn coral, and if you just mix and match them, it looks like a complete walkway uh, versus the, the stone and the cobble and the andesite. Those are all too different. They look like, when you put them together, they just look so uh, mismatched. See, look, they... They don't flow as nicely as this does. And it's kind of a, an, a, a faded, softer tone, so it would work well in maybe like a fantasy, fantasy city, something like that. And yeah, mix those up. Okay, one other thing before we get to the big thing over here is I made a magical crystal. This uses the new blocks and also a nether brick uh, wall. We have the two nether brick walls, uh, trap doors, fences there, and I did put an end crystal in here. I know not everybody has access to that, so you could easily put a sea lantern in there if you want. The big thing here is the cap and the bottom are in red, and I used blue around the outside to accent it. So that's why I feel a sea lantern would look nice in there. Yes. Now, before we get to the big build, I do want to show you one more thing, and that is a design for a, a nether portal. So right here we have a nether portal. You can see we used the blue variations of the blocks. We used the stripped log, we used the trap doors and all this. For the top, for the ceiling, we used warped work block, which we've used for carpet back there, but it also makes a nice ceiling. And then you see we have the lighter blocks in front, darker blocks in back, because if light was shining in, this part would be highlighted and the stuff farther back would be darker. Now, if you want more of like a jungle temple feel, you can do this. And you can add the red in there for just a pop of accent. There we go. Just a pop. Or if you want to make this like a nice, you know, fine interior design, get rid of those. And there you go. You have a nice design for a temple. I mean, you got to clean all that up, but you have a nice design for a temple, either an interior or an exterior. Yes, this could be nice for like the interior of a main room going to your nether portal, or this honestly could be the entrance, the exterior of the temple. Walk through, and if you walk through fast enough, you can go through the nether portal and into your base. If you want to go to the nether, you just walk up, you stay there, and you go to the nether. Very, very nice. Again, we use the doors as well here, and we use nether brick fence, because that goes really well with the crimson with a light on top. Oh, and Prismarine. All right. Now, I know you guys have been waiting. Let's take a look at this. And here we are. As I mentioned before, I was really inspired, as far as the natural builds go, the natural builds go, from the Avatar movie. I mean, these colors, this palette just works so well with this. And so I decided to make a little mini terrain scene that looks like it could be from Avatar. It was Avatar inspired. You see up here we have the floating rocks and the, the vines and the thistle going around there. We also have these decrepit trees using the uh, warped stem block. These make amazing fantasy trees. I was really happy with that. And the vines, the vines are nice. You might want to layer them a bit, but yeah, that goes well. And then the big thing here, the big thing that I'd like you guys to take away is the layering. So if you look here, we layered the ground 
goes up one, a little bit of detail, and then it goes up one again and some detailing, some bushes, some rocks, but you see there's a nice slight gradient to the ground, and I even recessed the, the walkway down, and even when you walk down, that gradient is there and you feel it. You can get the feeling there as you're walking, and that really helps to get that immersive feeling like you're in a jungle. And then, of course, as you walk down, you walk through this this uh, tree root, this giant enchanted tree root, and you walk through it there. Yeah, and then down into the cave, and the cave can even be like this huge, you know, 100 by 100 open area with vines and those big flowers we did back there, maybe a built-in, maybe like some sort of like an open air mansion, a ghostly temple of some sort, who knows? But yeah, this, this was one of my favorite things to do, the floating islands, oh, just, it all comes together. Yeah. But anyways, that's enough with this. I have one last build that I'd like to show you that I actually did in the nether that would make a nice nether base. So let's go check that out. Alright guys, and here it is, your nether base. Starter nether base. You can always expand on this as well. You can make different levels and make all sorts of things. You see down here we have a blue theme. We used, again, the prismarine. Goes well with the blue. We made a black roof, kind of makes it neutral, puts the focus down here, and we gave it that natural look, kind of like an avatar-inspired build here. And there's your nether portal. You take that back, you can go back to your overworld base, and then when you want to go in the nether, come back here. You have uh, shulker chests over there, blue ones over there, more shulker chests over there. You can even turn that into a farming area over here if you want for nether wart or whatever you like. And then when you go up here, you can use ladders or um, use some redstone, whatever you like. You come up here into the, uh, I guess you could say the entryway to the nether. You have the red theme here and you just have these little alcoves. Again, you can do a little bit of a farm. You can you know, expand this, make a farming room out here. You can put chests inside the doors. And yeah, this is just kind of a nice entry hallway to the nether. You get on your elytra and you just fly out, go do whatever farming you want to do. Go have fun. You got your warped nether biome there. And yeah, and the entire base is a hanging platform, which is kind of nice. It's a nice little hanging platform. You could even make uh, even make a little turret for ghasts. You can make it so you can like shoot ghasts, because I mean this whole area is just wide open. So ghasts come by maybe, other mobs. You can make like a little uh, target practice area, so to say. <laughs> yeah, anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed these 1.16 nether builds here hope you get a lot of use out of them see if you guys can you know maybe uh try some things of your own and maybe these even spark some ideas for you you can come up with your own stuff anyways that's gonna do it for me guys and i will catch you in the next video all right let's go back to the over oh i forgot the overworld base Oh, I'm going to have to build that. Oh, it's going to take so much time. Oh, it's not even in a good location. Oh, oh and there goes my phone. Oh, man. And Oh, here goes the outro.